This video will discuss the change in entropy during a constant pressure process. So from our previous video, we saw that for a tiny perturbation to our system state, du, the infinitesimal change in the internal energy, is equal to the heat. Uh, if this process is reversible, that's the reversible heat, dq rev, in exact differential, because heat and work are path functions dq rev which was equal to t times ds the change in entropy because we define the ds as uh, dq rev over t so dq rev equals t ds for reversible processes plus the work dw rev which is minus pdv the external pressure times the change in volume we saw from the previous video that the partial derivative of the entropy with respect to temperature at constant volume is equal to the constant volume heat capacity at that given temperature divided by the temperature. And in this video, we're going to look at uh, the same thing for constant pressure processes and go through that derivation. Okay, so the change in entropy that occurs between two temperatures, we saw entropy being a state function, is the entropy of the final temperature minus the entropy of the initial temperature, which we derived was equal to the integral from T1 to T2 of the constant volume heat capacity divided by T integrated with respect to T. And that's when dV equals zero or constant volume processes. Okay, so during constant volume processes, du is equal to the heat because we're not doing any work. But during constant pressure processes, we derived in previous videos on enthalpy, that the change in enthalpy, dh, during a process uh, that is constant pressure, that's equal to the heat that occurs during a reversible constant pressure process. So we also define enthalpy to be the internal energy plus the pressure times the volume. So dH is going to be du plus PV, which is du plus dPV. Using the product rule on dPV, we get PDV plus VDP. All right, so if we substitute that in there, we know that du we saw up here is TDS minus PDV. So now we have dH equals TDS minus PDV plus PDV plus VDP. Notice that there are two terms here for pressure times d volume, and one is negative, one is positive, so those two cancel. So the change in enthalpy that occurs during some small perturbation to our system is the temperature times the change in entropy plus the volume times the change in pressure. So we can go through a similar kind of derivation that we had in the previous video, the temperature dependence of entropy 1. And we'll end up with an expression that looks like this in the same way that we arrived to a similar expression in the previous video. ds equals, as a function of temperature and pressure, ds equals the constant pressure heat capacity divided by t times dt plus 1 over the temperature of dh dp minus v times dp. It's a partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to pressure at constant temperature minus the volume of the system. So since we're expressing S, the entropy, as a function of the temperature and the pressure here, S of TP, we can write the total differential of S as dS equals dS dt at constant P times dt plus dS dp at constant T times dp. And note that between these two equations, the corresponding terms in the brackets that I have here correspond to these partial derivatives. So then we can say that the partial derivative of entropy with respect to temperature at constant pressure is equal to the constant pressure heat capacity divided by the temperature. And similarly, the partial derivative of entropy with respect to pressure at a constant temperature is equal to 1 over the temperature times the partial derivative of the enthalpy with respect to pressure at a constant temperature minus the volume of the system. Uh, for an ideal gas, this derivative here is going to be is going to end up being 0, so you end up just getting minus V over T. Okay, so what do we get when we want to calculate the enthalpy change between two temperatures at a constant pressure? 
We have a similar type of expression that we had here for constant volume. Delta S being a state function is the final entropy minus the initial entropy, S of T2 minus S of T1, or the integral from T1 to T2 of dS, the tiny change in entropy. So that is equal to the integral from T1 to T2 of the partial derivative of S with respect to T at constant pressure times dT. And we saw that this, in, this derivative here is equal to Cp of T over T. So the change in entropy during uh, a temperature change at a constant pressure is equal to the integral from T1 to T2 of the constant pressure heat capacity divided by the temperature integrated with respect to temperature. Okay, so now we can relate the entropy at any two temperatures if we know the entropy of one temperature. So we're in a place to start thinking about from the perspective of macroscopic classical thermodynamics, what is the absolute entropy of the system? Not just what, it cha what its change is between two states, but what the absolute value of the entropy is. So the entropy of any given temperature is going to be the entropy at 0 Kelvin plus the change in entropy that occurs going from 0 Kelvin up to that temperature. So the entropy of a given temperature, uh, barring phase transitions, let's not worry about that for now, but if there's no phase transitions from 0 Kelvin up to T, the entropy of a given temperature is the entropy at 0 Kelvin plus the integral from 0 to T of the constant pressure heat capacity at that given temperature divided by that temperature integrated with respect to that temperature dt prime. So if we know the constant pressure heat capacity at every single temperature of the system, we can compute how it changes from any temperature to another. But we don't have a way of getting what the entropy is at zero Kelvin. So the question for now is how do we find what the entropy of a system is at zero Kelvin? And to do that, we're going to turn to the third law of thermodynamics, which is the focus of our next video.